Hey everybody, Mama Mama Razzle Dazzle here. It's nice to see you again. We're going to do a crane chain today. We're going to have to fold it and then we're going to make them into a crane chain. It's like a whole string of them. Um, so, these are the little cranes. Um, we're going to talk about paper for just a minute. You can get them in all kinds of sizes. Um, you can get them lots of different places, lots of different patterns and prints. This is just origami paper, and this is an origami paper, but it's thicker. It's almost like washi paper. It doesn't fold as crispy, but it's really sparkly and just different. So I'm going to pack of that. Still even more kind of prints. This is a pretty one. You can get these just about anywhere. You can get them on eBay or... Hobby Lobby, Amazon, just about anywhere. Now, the sizes I just showed you are about 6 by 6 inches, but you can get smaller ones that are 3 by 3. And sometimes, these are the washi papers. They have like a soft cotton type of back. And the regular um, origami paper just is uh, like a hard pressed paper. So these um, come in usually... Uh, they, because they might stick together, they usually have like a paper between them, like these I picked out. They were in between all of these. <laughs> but they're very pretty, and um, they're just a little bit different. Then there's another size you can get like this. And um, it tells you sometimes on these boxes what the colors look like. I think I got these on eBay. And then there's an even tinier one. <laughs> Which is like a two inch paper and I carry these in my coat pocket in the winter time if I go anywhere or walk around or even just to have them by my chair and during TV time I just um, fold lots of cranes because I use them up into crane chains that I give to people so there's lots of different colors in this box and um, there's lots of different um, prints more than just this this one that I have here. There's these are all the prints that are in the box, and then you can get all kinds. It's just a lot of fun. Okay, so we're gonna start with a piece of paper now. Um, the most important thing isn't the size; it's really the uh, square. This I found a really big piece. Um, just a small packet of these. They're 12 inch papers. And I think it might actually be easier to show you on there. <laughs> okay, so there's a couple important things. There's the right side of the paper. And the white side is the wrong side of the paper. Okay, and when we fold these, it's important if I show you that the print is out, you need to fold it that way because what will happen is the crease it depends what um, direction the crease is going to make the fold of the crane. Okay, so we're going to start with this nice piece of 12 by 12. It's got butterflies and everything. And this one happens to be double-sided. <laughs> so you won't be able to... I'm going to show you kind of both ways because I want to be, you to be able to see the folds with this. But I want you to also realize which is the right and the wrong side. So we're going to start folding it in half with the right side out. Okay. I was like debating if I would show you on this paper, but because it's so big, it's really great. Now you want to make sure always that the paper is square when you start and that the edges are together. You don't want to have anything overlapping like this. You want it to be exactly okay, exactly meeting up. Now, from corner to corner, we can check that. But when we see that it's matched in the middle, I usually just go right down and make a crease. And then I push my crease this way. That way, um, my edges are still nice and perfectly straight. Okay, so we have that with the little white paper. Next, we're going to open it up and fold it the other way. So we're going to make like a plus sign. Again, I take it down this way and then across. And then I'm sure 
that the edges are even. Okay, so now we want to end up with a crease on the paper, like a plus sign. Okay, so I'm going to open this one up. Sometimes it works really nice if you're using the smaller paper and use a clipboard. You can bump the edge up against it and that makes it, you know, get perfectly straight. Okay, so once again, crease it like that. You know what I mean by the clipboard is so the next, I'll show you then. Um, so the next one we're going to do is we're going to fold it uh, corner to corner, but the wrong side has to be out. Okay. So sometimes, you know, it helps to bump your edges up against the clipboard. Yeah, nice and straight, corner to corner. Okay, now when you look at the back, you have one going this way, and you want to make one going the other way. So corner to corner with the other corners. And this is important, okay, so try your best to get it you know, as perfect as you can, because as you fold and it gets smaller, it needs to be more accurate. So we're after that fold, okay? So the corner to corner has to be with the white side out and the side to side needs to be with the pretty side out, okay? And I'm going to catch up on this big one. So we're going to go corner to corner. The bigger paper is a little harder to wrangle around, but it's going to be a cool looking bird. <laughs> Same thing, you want to get the corner to corner just perfectly right. I bring the finger down to the corner. Very nice. And then the other one, the inside out, the, the fact that it's <laughs> okay, so we got the creases this way. We need the creases going this way. It would be easier if I did it on the white paper with the white back. Okay. I'll show you on both kinds of paper the whole way through so I don't mess you up. Okay. So now that we have this, there are on the little square here, on every, on every square section, there's an indent here. So we want to take the paper and push it in so we get this nice little square with flaps that go up and down. Let me show you how I did that again. This is why it's important for you to crease it right. Okay, so this was the triangle, and that crease where we're going to push in on that crease till they meet in the middle, and then that's how we'll get this square. Okay? If it doesn't look like this, you got to stop and take a look at what you did. <laughs> Okay, so you want to have once more. You take it where that fold is here and push it in and then down. Okay, so we have a square. And I'm going to do it on this one. I think. Uh, Pushed it in, pushed in the two sides, and then we got the square. From 
here on out, you won't have to worry about the right side or the wrong side. Okay? Now, there's a crease here. You can see it better on maybe this one. There's a crease. Now, we want to make, take the tip of this corner and line up this edge into the middle where that crease is. Okay. I'm going to do that with the other side too, but just the one layer, okay, because you should have a, a front and a back, okay. So now I'm going to also turn it over, and I'm going to make this edge line up with that center line again. And this one's a little easier because you've got the back one to line it up with too. over a little bit. Okay, so it should look like that. And I'm going to do it again on this bigger one. Fold it into the center. I need to crease a little bit better for myself. They have bone fold, bone um, things that are they're like called boning, and they're like uh, a knife almost. And you can get some of those to help you fold if your fingers are getting sore. Okay, so we folded those two down. Flip over. Same thing. Fold it to the middle line. went over just a tad. It's hard to see on some papers. This one's really hard to see. It's real busy and uh... but it is important that these meet up in the middle and get as close as you can because this is kind of precision paper folding here. <laughs> You're not going to trim anything off. Okay, now that we've got both sides pressed down like that Looks like an ice cream cone, right? Or a kite. We're going to take this point and fold it over, right over these guys here. So, we're after the crease, Mooney. This is going to be his body. So then you want to flip it over to the other side. And crease it again. And this is going to just uh, help define his body once we put his wings in. Okay, going to fold this one. Okay, so we got that, that crease made. Now, we're going to open it up a little bit on just the one side we're going to leave that side folded down and we're going to open this up be careful not to tear it and we're going to fold it upwards so this piece will come inwards a little and this one will come inwards and as they come inwards then we open this up and press it down Should be a little bit better. See, like the whole piece should be pointy. That's going to be his wing tip. Okay, now we turn it over. Do the same thing. Open this up. Pull this piece up. Sort of open it into almost like a cup looking thing and then press the sides in and then the the rest will just, if you've creased it really good, it will fall into place just like that. Okay, so now you have one uh, end that has this. This will be the head and the tail. And then you got one that has the wings and the body in it. Okay, so once more, I'll show you on here. 
open that up. Just kind of puff that up a little bit and push in the sides. Very gently recrease it, but recrease it inward like that. Okay, I'll do the other side. Open it. Push these in to meet the middle. Sometimes you just tug on that a little bit so it doesn't rip though. Here, yeah, just a little. And it'll help you get these little corners. Lay it down. There you go. Okay, so you got the wings and the head and the tail. Alright. Okay, now we're going to define the head and the tail a little more. So, there's two pieces here. We only take one. And we're going to fold that into the middle from the point. And it'll just sort of end right here. You see how that, like, doesn't go all the way up. It just ends right there. So we're going to fold the other one to the middle. Try to get the point first. And then push this down. Okay, so that's one side. I'm going to flip it over and do the same thing. Fold that long piece into the middle. The wings are still up here. This was the head and the tail portion. Alright, I'm gonna fold that to the middle. And sometimes you just make it just a little bit shy of the middle. Okay? Alright, so now we've got that folded on both sides. I'm gonna do the same thing on this one. Oh, I got it wrong. Do you see? I was ready to fold the wing. Now we gotta make sure we've got the head and the tail. And the head and the tail part goes to the middle. And do it with the other side. If you can't um, get origami paper right away, you can use plain old like printer paper. But you can also use um, wrapping paper, a good quality one, not a real cheesy one, because it'll tear. But if you get one of those, it feels nice and thick and creamy like <laughs> that makes very beautiful origami paper. The only thing is you've got to be very sure that you've got it square, okay? Okay, so now we got the head and the tail, and we're going to open up part of it, one of them at a time, and push it up. This part I always could never understand when I was trying to read it from directions. So this is how it was. We're going to open it up and press it into the body. Just remember to keep it like. So it's going to be um, flat and symmetrical as much as you can. This one didn't work out too great, but you know, it'll be all right. So you open up the other side, press it up, and then fold it back inward on itself. Now this one, the second one, or the first one, one you can make come out further and press it, or you can make it go in forward inward if you want. Now that's going to just depend on how you want your bird to look. If you want him to look like he's flying straight out or sitting straight up. These are the wings. I'm going to fold those down a little bit. Okay, now I usually just decide which one I think looks more like a tail and which one I think looks more like a head. I think this one looks more like a head. So I'm going to open up that fold a little bit. Fold my head down and then fold the paper inward and there you got your head. Now usually the tail I leave straight out 
you can actually make it out this way if you want you know but whatever you do just crease it well and we open up the wings so to open up the body a little bit so it can sit better we put thumbs on the top of the wing and fingers underneath the wing and we want to give good support there because we don't want to tear it okay then you gently pull it out and there you go the body pops open and you got your birdie your nice little crane all right now we're going to make one more with that big one. We'll do the same thing with that and make the head and the neck and the tail. Okay, so we folded them in already. And I'm going to open them up one at a time. This will be the head or the tail. And fold it back and crease it in. even pieces, nice even lines. Now this is cool. There's a little bit of black on the tip of this paper, so what I'm going to use, I'll use that for the head. And I'll make it look like he has a beak. <laughs> so you fold it inward like that. Okay, so now we have a crane. Now I'm going to Hold the wings down and put a crease in them. Okay, now we're going to open up the body. Thumbs on top, close to the body. Fingers underneath, close to the body. I'm just going to pull it out. I used to have a teacher that would blow in this hole in the bottom. To puff it up. <laughs> there we go. Don't have to blow anywhere. Okay, so there's your crane. He's a nice big one, and you could actually put a string through him and have him for a mobile. When I was a kid, we used to take the tail and the head and go like this, and sometimes if you get it just right, the wings will move. It'll look like they're flying. Okay. So sometimes um, I like to make crane chains for people and send them in the mail. And I puff the um, cranes up when I send them because I'm afraid somebody might rip them. Um, and there's a way to just put a little note in if you want to leave them all flattened in the crane chain and tell people how to um, open them and not rip them. But you take a chance doing that. Um, and when I do write that in there, um, I tell them when the cranes may, or may be flattened a little, actually, when they arrive. So I tell them to gently place their fingers above and below the wing near the base, just like, I, like we just did. And at the same time, gently pull outward to puff up the body and spread out the wings. This, uh, the crane is a symbol for luck, love, longevity, joy, celebration of life good fortune, hope, and peace. And there's a tradition in uh, Asian countries where they make, they fold a thousand little tiny white cranes and put them in a jar when someone gets married. And then they are supposed to just keep that so they can have hope and peace and love and luck and celebrate life. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna use some fish line. Um, this is basically uh, beading nylon from a hobby store. There's different uh, weights. This one uh, is really flexible and you can hardly see it. Um, but I'm going to make a pretty long crane chain and I don't want it to break. Now if I try to break this, I can't. Okay, so this is probably just fine. But for this particular one, I'm going to put some... Um, 
um, prisms and stuff on it and they might get heavy so I'm just going to use the heavier one. Okay, so I'm just going to take a long piece of probably maybe nine y or three yards. I just pull it out. I would rather have more than enough than too little because I don't want to have any nuts in it. Okay. Now one of the things I like to do on the end is put something heavy and beautiful like on this one here I have I'm going to use this crystal. And as the crane chain hangs in a window, it'll be pretty and um, probably cast some rainbows in the room. Right. And I'll show you some other things that I've used too. Okay, so that's really pretty. And it's going to sparkle in the sunlight. Okay. So, before I get any further, I'll show you the other kinds of things. I just collect stuff. As we build the crane chain, we'll start with this in the bottom and we'll have to have a bead underneath each bird to hold it in place so it doesn't slide up or down. And then every now and then I like to put something extra in my uh, crane chains, like a little turtle, like that, or a butterfly. I just sort of tie them in along. And one of my favorite things is the ginkgo leaf. That's my husband's, one of his favorite trees. And the ginkgo leaf has a lot of symbolism. It's uh, also a symbol for vitality, peace, hope, and love. And uh, it's also one of the only trees that survives, has survived um, through all hundreds and thousands of years. So. I just like the symbolism of the ginkgo leaf. Some other things that you can get along the way, you know, you might go in a hobby store and they have all these pieces of, you know, things on sale because there's only one left. Well, this is a, I forget what they call it, the phoenix. And this is a heart, a crystal heart. And then there's tear drop shapes and ovals, anything like it gives a little bling. will catch the eye when the cranes kind of spin around. And this little box. I think I get a bunch of nice little boxes to keep them organized. But I have uh, this is a fairy, so that could be kind of cute. Easy to hold without putting it on a string. And add some more turtles in there. And here's a fun one. It's um, yarn with knitting needles. So you just kind of look around. Etsy has a bunch of places where I was getting these um, ginkgo leaves. I like to get a bunch at a time so I have them when I want to make something. Might not always be for crane tape. I got one more little box I'll show you. This was a fun one. It's a ceramic piece with butterflies on. There's a hole in it so we could tie the end of the nylon string to that. It's a nice butterfly piece. It's an unusual thing, but um, that would make a real good bottom spinner to go around. Here's a dove. That would be good too. Some kind of bird and a key. Key's a good thing. Key to your heart. And these were interesting little baubles, so we could they have a great uh, place to put a string through. They have um, metal on the back and clear on the front, so depending on where you're gonna hang that, you might not want to use something that has a a different back like that. There's also some of these teardrops that we can work in. And um, I took a bracelet apart that was um, in a hobby store and just I'm using the beads from that. These nice pillow beads, they have like that coating on to give it that fire 
fire and ice type colors. Okay, so you get the idea. Here's a nice one. Just odd pieces. There's like a, a heart with a crown and you can put your string through the back of that. And a nice green one. It was another piece of glass that was kind of fun and has some green in it. Green and blue. Okay, so what I'm going to do first is um, I tied I tied that um, sparkly piece on. Oh no, I didn't. I'm going to try. <laughs> okay, I'm going to tie this nice little sparkly piece on. And actually it's pretty heavy and it's going to give some weight to the crane chain. And that'll be good because uh, then it won't get wrinkly like it'll it'll stay stay down oh there's the hole it's really pretty okay so i am not gonna uh do spare knots i'm gonna tie this a lot of times because i don't want it to come apart and you won't really notice the knots once it's hanging because it's clear string i generally don't glue the knots i tie like four or five though and then I give it a good yank here to make sure it's going to stay. And then I clip it, but not like so severely close that it's going to untie. So there's just a little tiny piece sticking out, but that's going to help it. Okay, so now we want to lay out, we want to arrange the cranes in a way that um, they're either big on the bottom, like so they'll go big to small or small to big. So you just have to decide how you'd like to do that and what colors you want to arrange, whichever way. So I think I'm going to use um, a nice red one down here at the bottom. And then there's some red in the yellow, and then there's some yellow in here. <laughs> And I'll just sort of line them up like that. I think those are cute together. And I also want to start changing my sizes here. So uh, this pretty yellow one might be good to have next to the shiny. Um, yeah, maybe not. Maybe we got too much yellow in there. Just <laughs> I just keep playing around until I get something that I really like. So here, I think the white one would be good next, and then this little purple guy next to the white. And then you gotta do something here to catch somebody's eye. So we'll take a another really tiny one, and maybe we'll just use this bright green one, because he just really makes it pop. Okay, so then in between there, we can do a couple things. And so somewhere I'll put the butterfly, I'll tie that in. And somewhere else I'll tie in the turtle, maybe back there. But I like to get it all lined up um, so I have it just, you know, so I can just stick them right in. And don't have to, like, try to make the choices as I go. All right. I just ripped. We don't need that. Okay, so now in order to get this little guy to stay somewhere where I want him on the crane chain, I have to get a bead bigger than that hole and tie it where I want it to land. Or if I use a bead that's very small, it can pull right through and keep him at the top. So it's just a matter of which size beads you have and um, how you want it to look. Okay, so right here I've got a bunch of beads. And sometimes I like to use a big clear shiny one. First of all, because you don't always notice it. And second of all, if you do, it, it sparkles. Just like, you know, the one that you're putting in the bottom. But if you want... You can take something really tiny and let it get through the hole of the 
of the bird but um i don't really like to do that too much because then if that rips it's done if i put a bead like this big on the bottom it'll sit on top of the bead you won't it won't um, make it look bad and it'll have much more support that way so i'm just going to see how big these are See, that will be pretty close it actually might go through there and then I have to decide if I want all of my beads to be the same on the bottom of every bird or if I want to use different colors and you know, like I got some cool gold one here and a blue one and I even have some stars those are fun to work a star in underneath the bird I'll try that. Some people just make it a little variety of everything. The person we're making this for um, has had some brain injury um, because of hypoxia. And he's beginning to wake up and notice things and trying to talk and he's fighting really hard to live. So if we give him some a nice crane chain with lots of sparkle to it, it might stimulate him in some way. It might open his eyes more or have something different to look at. Okay, so we're going to try to help that guy a little bit. So I think I'll use that one of those big white beads for under the red crane. I'll probably start it down here and all you're going to do is tie it in a knot. You can fuss around and tie a knot before it and after it but in the long run because this is clear you're not going to see it and it's a lot more work and it doesn't necessarily stay too well so I would rather just I've had a lot more luck doing this gets a little tiny bit off center but it's going to be under the bird okay so I just put two knots in there okay now we have to thread um, a needle on here and I have needles that are very long and they're called doll makers needles I got these from homesew.com. Uh, it's in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. It's a mail order place, so I'll leave you links to where I've gotten a lot of the things. I don't have affiliates for most places, but I really just want you to find the, the stuff to make them. Now this uh, piece of nylon doesn't seem to want to fit in that eye. so. Let me see if I can cut a little point on it. If not, we'll have to switch what we're doing. Yep. Most of my doll's eye needles are bigger. So I'm going to try to find one. Okay, so I have this doll needle. And I'm going to use the, I had two sizes of filament, this uh, plastic fish line stuff, beading material. Um, and the eye of my needle was too small. So I'm going to use um, a, a thinner um, cord. Okay, so that's okay. This is still very strong and nothing's going to break. So I'm going to start over and I'm going to that through the hole. This is actually, since it's finer, it's much easier to get it to knot right. And it'll knot and it'll feel like it locks in better. Okay, so we're just going to tie that on there. Four or five knots.
give it a tug and then I'm going to clip off the rest of it. The little bit that's hanging off. Mm, let's see, there it is. Just be careful you don't get the long string. <laughs> All right. Alrighty, so now I'm going to take this white bead and slip it on and tie it in a knot. And then we'll start putting the cranes on. Now, we don't want the crane to sit right on top of the um, prism glass because we won't be able to see that. So we make it just a few inches higher. And the only thing that's going to be weighing this little guy down, this bead, is the crane. So I'm just going to put two knots in. Then in order to get through the crane, we have to put the nylon filament in through the needle. A regular sewing needle won't work and a tapestry needle will be too big and to put too big of a hole in the crane. So okay, so I've got this needle threaded. And I'm going to actually I'm going to collapse the crane a little bit and put the needle in this hole. There's a hole in the bottom where the crane, all the pieces came together. Uh, let me see if you can see that. Okay. And then I'm going to push it through the point of the crane very gently and pull it through. Take the needle off because you won't need that for right away. And slide the crane down. Just try to make sure you don't rip his wings or break anything, you know, like bend anything. If you do, take it off <laughs> and start over. It's just a piece of paper, you know? It's okay, so there we have um, one crane on there. Alright, so now we're going to put another bead above here where we want the crane to sit. And we can thread that on without the needle. So I'm going to use this cool star bead. And there's two directions. The, you can see that there's a line in the star. So you want to make sure that the little point will be at the top. what I'm going to do first is put a clear bead on so that I won't have to tie the star and then it'll stay in the right direction. So I'm going to stick the clear bead on. You kind of just have to do this as you go. and There's no rules. It's whatever you like. to see sometimes. Twist it around.
just gotta find the clear bead. There he is. And I don't want that to be down there on him. I want it to be up above where we want the next crane to go. So I'm just going to tie a knot twice around that guy. And I, I leave all this extra sh uh, string in it. It seems like I should cut it so it wouldn't be in my way, but eventually, um, if I put enough cranes on here, it'll need to be there to have something to hang on to um, when we get them done. Okay, so now we've got the clear bead that's going to catch the little yellow star. Alrighty, then we're going to put the needle on again. We only need the needle to get through the crane. So the needle goes right in here. There's a little hole. And then try to get it straight into the middle. If it goes off to the side a little bit, then it looks like fine too, because then the crane is flying a little bit this way or that way. So there's nothing to worry about if you don't get it quite right. So now we've got two. Okay. like to put on the butterfly but the same thing I think I need to have a clear bead on first to stop it from going down on top of the crane so I'm gonna put another clear one on this is such a peaceful project because the Nothing makes a lot of noise, and you just get to think while you're folding the paper. Folding the paper is actually very relaxing. Um, my mom couldn't fall asleep some nights, and she started folding, folding cranes at the kitchen table, five or ten of them, before she'd go to bed at night. And um, that seemed to help. It's sort of like meditative to fold the paper. It's very peaceful. And I guess part of it is, you know, there's the sensation, the folding, the touching the paper, the rubbing the paper kind of thing. But there's also just the same motions over and over, which probably helps a lot too. Okay, so we got the clear one on. And now we're going to get the butterfly. And I'm trying to think about how I want to do the butterfly. I wanted to either weave this thread through the butterfly or tie it on and let him just sort of hang off to the side. So let me take a look at that. I just have to get the fish line straightened out. As you get more and more on you don't have this length problem. Okay, so we got a hole here in the butterfly. And then there's um, a whole bunch of holes here. So I'll pick the low one and the high one. So the butterfly will kind of hang there like that off. Even though he's uh, on there in a straight line, he's off at an angle. And that's good because that gives it some interest. Okay, now we need to tie on another bead for the next crane. So. Find the end. <laughs> there it is. And 
There's a nice gold one. So we'll thread him on. When I do little tiny crane chains with the very small cranes, um, I often use the little tiny clear beads and let them go into the hole underneath it and then you don't see anything because it's so small you don't really want to make a big bead there. Okay. There's that. I'm going to put the needle on again. Okay, so we're going to take this one. And you can actually fold the whole crane down. Just find the hole at the bottom and put it, pierce it up through the very top right here. Just gently pull it all through. Three cranes hanging on there. It's getting pretty long. I'll have to show it to you on the screen once we get done. Now here's an interesting little one. I found this little heart bead and it almost matches the color of the bird. So I'm going to put a, another clear small one on the bottom of that bead. Now we'll just slide the heart on. Oh, I just lost it. <laughs> I pinched my little little bead and then I lost it. Oh here it is. Oof. Going blind. Above that guy. All right, now we're going to find that heart. Next we have to thread the bird on the crane with the needle. Okay, and I'm aiming for the top. And I'm getting tangled now. It's gonna be bad. Okay, so you get the drift, and now I'm going to um, just put a few more on. I don't think I'm going to use all of them. Uh, let's see. The white one. 
think I'm gonna tie the um, ginkgo leaf in the middle of, of the next two. And this is gonna be naturally off to the side because it's got a the hole to the charm is off to the side. It's okay, it'll look like the ginkgo is falling out of the tree. Underneath the white crane, I probably should just use a, a white um, bead, but it looks kind of a strange color compared to that. Let's see what else we've got here. Yeah, this is good. It's like a clear with that fiery uh, look to it. I'll just use that. different lengths of these in my house. Uh, some are attached by like some blinds in my one room and I have them really long. Like you can make a 25 foot chain if you would like. And then I have some with bigger purple paper um, and it's just one bird with um, a ginkgo leaf that's like a crystal and a few other things like that but pretty much the bird is by himself because it's a real big paper and I used that for my um, Alzheimer's blog because it's the right color purple and just um, the symbolism of it it gave like some hope and um, and love and everything like that and so you can do a lot of different things with these. Some people make them real long and then wrap them around their um, dresser, like the mirror on their dresser. They aren't even like hanging down like straight. They just have it uh, just like, uh, yeah, just draped over everything. And that looks really cool too. Okay, I think I'm going to do a... A pink bead, that'll be a different touch for the purple bird, and then uh, we'll do a white one for the green. And then we're almost done. For a while there I had um, some, a whole bunch like of birds, with uh, cranes with that really tiny paper, and I strung three of them together and hung them from my mirror in my car. <laughs> um, and now I have some just hanging off a light, just little tiny ones, and it's really cute to see just a bunch of tiny ones together. leave the needle on but sometimes the beads are so small the big fat uh, doll needle won't go through them so oops I got the wrong thing sorry I got I forgot the crane <laughs> I'm right, gonna take the purple crane next got the pink bead for under him So 
sometimes I take a black sharpie marker and I color the tip of this clear uh, fish line and, and then I can see much better where the end is. Okay, now this guy, his, the hole's smaller because it's a smaller paper. So we stick it in there and we shoot for the top. Whoop, missed, so I'll just move it. Okay. Alright, that looks cool. One more. Oops, and we have a turtle to use. Let's put him on next. Just gonna tie him on the string. Hang the turtle on, tie him on twice. Okay, that's cute, little turtle. And then we're just going to do the white bead and the green. Then we'll put a few flowers on it. I'll show you how to do that. And then we're done. Last one, put the needle in the hole. I'm just gonna twist the needle if it's not going because some papers are a little tougher than others. Right. Okay, now I'll show you another little trick. This is really the last one. Okay, the little green one. So I take the end of the nylon and I tie it in like a double knot. So I lay these two strings together and wrap around my fingers and pull through the hole. and tight. I'm going to go for one more because that's a little group of three stems in there. And then some of the stems are kind of out in the, in the way. pretty cool. And then I'm going to just take the clip um, the closed pin and put it through the loop. Now sometimes to make it easier for people I have a little um, saying about the paper cranes. And I just say thank you for purchasing them. And they're made in the USA and they're uh, please visit greensquiltingandweavingshop.com. I don't have any cranes there. I just kind of make them as we go. 
but then there's a little note on here if they're flattened when they get there to put their fingers near the base of the wing and pull it out. And the symbolism for the um, crane is for luck, love, longevity, joy, celebration of life, good fortune, and hope and peace. And then on here, I'm also just going to write a little bit about the ginkgo leaf, how it's also a symbol for vitality, peace, hope, and love. When you live in a small place, this is a good craft to do. And it's also latex free, so if you have latex allergies, you're not going to get sick from it. And for my husband, um, who had Alzheimer's, I made him crane chains to look at. So you can help a lot of people and share the love with the crane chains. It's not that hard, it takes a little time. Um, and it's not really that expensive and like I said you can actually make them out of wrapping paper instead of origami paper but the origami paper is not very expensive and uh, you can definitely make somebody happy including yourself so here are some of my other crane chains um, attached onto the blinds of the door and I know it's kind of hard to see them close up, so I'll give you some idea of what's going on here. Each one of these have a crystal down at the bottom. It's like uh, pretty. And they also have ginkgo leaf on. And this one has a, um, let's see. Here it is. It's a crystal that's a Swarsky crystal, and it's their ginkgo leaf um, crystal. So, okay. There's all kinds of pretty papers that these are made out of. Some are like the ones I showed you, and some are different. And this is the one that I did out of a big piece of purple from my Alzheimer's blog. So there's a crystal here. And then there's a ginkgo leaf, and then there's the purple cream. Here's one that I have in my kitchen. It also has the Skorsky crystal ginkgo leaf, and then the charm ginkgo leaf. And these are some uh, wash, washi paper. Um, they're a little bit different in weight, and they don't fold as crisp. But the colors are beautiful, and the paper is thick and a lot of fun to work with. So the sky's the limit, and you can make anything you want. Make them as big, long, short, fancy, whatever you like to do. Spread the love.